China has issued its first national drought alert of the year. This follows seven consecutive days of red alert heat warnings as temperatures in many parts of the country hit over 40 degrees Celsius. The heat wave that's already lasted over two months is expected to continue. The water flow of the Yangtze, China's longest river, is well down on the average for this time of year. Uh, well, let's talk to Mark Oswald, the uh, chief economist and global strategist at ADM Investor Services International. Mark, welcome back. Um, well, we've been reporting on it for so many weeks now, heat waves, drought, flooding in China, all alarming industries. And I guess suppliers for big companies like uh, Toyota and Apple have all been hit by energy blackouts amid these heat waves. This isn't just a China story, is it? How exposed is the global supply chain network? No, it's not just the China story. Um, and it's something which is easily resolved um, with either money or interest rates. Or, um, you know, it, it's simply not, not there. Um, it's going to cause some disruptions. I think that the problem that we find, you know, this is particularly hitting Sichuan province, where there is a high concentration, particularly of um, um, battery makers for electric vehicles, um, cattle, as it's known. Um, there's quite a lot of steel mills, aluminium, um, and about 15% of all China's polysilicon um, production is there, and that hits all the solar panel production. So it has an impact, um, and it's, it's not easily resolved by any manner of means. It's in, in a certain sense, it's less disruptive than some of the other things that we've been seeing. However, it's a long term problem, which you know, it, this isn't just China's problem. You know, we've got a huge energy crisis in Europe, one of the same thing. We had a massive one in Brazil last year. Uh, there's been a problem in California and the US uh, for 10 years with this sort of thing. So it is enormously disruptive, and it really, to me, emphasizes that everyone needs production um, <clears throat> uh, supply chains because um, this is becoming more of and more of an issue, and it needs to be factored into corporate planning. And on that basis, I mean, which industries, to be precise, are at greatest global risk from this extreme weather in China? Um, well, it, it, auto sector, without a shadow of a doubt, particularly the electric vehicle makers, uh, which is pretty much everybody now, um, <clears throat> um, anything involving steel or aluminium, uh, th there's going to be an impact from that. Um, and we should also not forget that this is also going to have an impact on agriculture. Um, and it's an interesting contrast between what's going on in Sichuan as opposed to what's going on in Shanxi, which is where there's enormous floods, which is also impacting uh, agricultural output. And that uh, primarily has the impact of maybe China will have to uh, accept the fact that its crops this year aren't going to be as good, which will put it in competition with everybody else for what are often quite heavily disrupted because of the Russia-Ukraine war um, <clears throat> or... Uh, affected by droughts elsewhere, um, agricultural products. Can we put numbers, if that's possible, uh, on the economic uh, damage from this adverse weather? Can we view this in terms of the hit to GDP, or is it just too early yet? I think it's too early. Um, you know, it, it, hopefully it will, there will be some easing of this, even though the temperatures don't seem to be um, likely to fall any time particularly soon. Um, there, there are, you know, I mean, the, the, the good thing in terms of Sichuan is it's probably one of the few states in, in provinces in China which is very reliant on hydropower. Most of the other ones are reliant on coal. Now, there's a price issue there, but at least that domestic production can be increased to make up for that. You know, what's the sort of hit we're going to see? Um, it... <sighs> It's very difficult to say. People have been hoarding a lot. So um, to a certain extent, it's not going to be as bad as before, simply for the reason that you know, people have already started because of the pandemic to move from just in time production to just in case. Um, and so they, they are better stocked. It would be very disruptive if this went on for a prolonged period. 
because then those those backlogs of inventories of raw materials and uh, semi-finished goods would start to deplete and then people would start to become very concerned. Mark, good to see you. Thanks very much for coming back on the programme. Mark uh, Oswald, the Chief Economist and Global Strategist at ADM in London.